talk about raid. No, not that kind of raid. Not that kind of raid either. That kind of raid. Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of Dealing TV DIY. I'm Mike and I'm here to help you get more out of your network. So uh, what I wanted to cover today was network attached storage and the different ways that hard drives can be configured in them, um, whether it be standard or some type of RAID configuration. Um, I wanted to give a little breakdown of that to make it a little bit more clear about what's going on. Um, so the very first, the lowest uh, common denominator way that you can configure a, a hard drive inside of a network attached storage device is much the way it is in your computer. And that's just called standard. So if you have one hard drive in your computer set to standard mode, you're gonna probably see a C drive. If you add another one, you're gonna see a D drive in there. Well, whenever you take something um, like the DNS 313 here, the only way that this can be set up is in a standard mode. Um, so when you plug this into your network or directly into your PC, you're gonna see another hard drive letter. Now, all of the DNS 323, 321, and DNS 343, they can all be set into standard mode also, um, which would just give you, um, you know, more drive letters. Um, whenever you set a um, network attached storage in a standard mode, you're not using any type of RAID at all. Um, you're gonna retain 100% of the size of however many drives you put into it. So, you know, you'll have two drives in the 321 and the 323 and four drives in the 343. Now this doesn't give you any redundancy, meaning if one of the drives were to fail, you're gonna lose all of the information off of that drive. The second drive, if you have a second one in there, is gonna be fine, but all of the information from the other one will be gone. So that's why we recommend that you use some form of RAID. The second method that you can use for configuring your hard drives um, that would apply to the 321, the 323, and the 343 would be called JBOD. JBOD stands for just a bunch of disks. And what that means is the network attached storage device is going to connect the drives all together, whether it's two drives or four drives, into what looks like to your computer as one big giant drive. Now, what's important about this is, once again, this is not a type of RAID and will not give you any redundancy. So, say in the case of like the 323, you were to put two hard drives in there and set them up in a JBOD configuration and the first drive died, there's a possibility that you may be able to recover the information on the second drive, but the information on the first drive would be completely gone. Now, this would be okay if you had a, a backup of your information somewhere else and you just wanted something that you were gonna stream music and movies off of and you want just a lot of space. That's kind of what you would use JBOD for. The third way to configure your hard drives is to use what's called striping. This is RAID level zero. What this is good for is when you need a lot of speed when you're downloading or reading something off of the network attached storage device. What happens is when you set your network attached storage device to be in striping mode, it's gonna take and split the data onto however many drives that you're using, whether it's two in the 323 or the 321 or four in the 343. Um, what this is good for is the speed, like I was saying, maybe you're gonna stream a movie or something like that and you want to get the best speed possible, you would use striping because the NAS box is gonna read off of all the drives at the same time. Now, what's important is there is not any redundancy using this mode of RAID either because half of the information is on one drive and half the information is on the, another drive if one of these drives fails, you only have half of your information. So I wouldn't use uh, RAID 0 unless you have a backup of your data somewhere else. The fourth way of configuring your uh, drives in a network attached storage is to use RAID level 1. 
Now raid level one is called mirroring. What's good about this one is that whatever information that you copy to one of the drives is duplicated exactly on the second drive. Now this is great for redundancy because if one of your drives goes down, you put a new uh, replacement drive in and it'll automatically get rebuilt to be like the other drive. Now, one of the things to keep in mind though, is that you're only going to be uh, getting half of the space. So let's say you have two 500 gigabyte hard drives. When you put those in and you use them in a mirrored fashion, you're only gonna have 500 gigabytes of space because you have a duplicate copy. But this is important if you're going to keep, you know, really critical files on your network attached storage device, which a lot of people do. I highly recommend using um, RAID level one for the DNS 321 and the DNS 323 so that you don't lose your data. So the final method of hard drive configuration for D-Link products um, is RAID level five. Now, since there, it requires more drives, RAID level five is only available on the DNS 343. What it does is it combines striping with mirroring, but in this case, it's called striping with parity. And what the parity does is it puts um, parity bits that can check the other data to make sure it's correct um, in the event of a hard drive failure. If one of the hard drives should fail, the other three drives can rebuild it, but you also gain the performance of the um, striping. So um, if you have really critical files, maybe they're really big and you need to be able to get to them quickly, um, RAID level five is what you wanna go for. Here at D-Link TV, that's what we use for saving all of our videos. Now, one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're setting up uh, any one of these hard drive configurations is how much space that you're going to get from the particular you know, configuration that you decide to go with. When you're using the standard mode, you're gonna get 100% of all of the hard drive space of however many hard drives you put in because they're just viewed as normal hard drives like what would be installed in your computer. When you're using JBOD, you'll get the total amount of all of the hard drives combined into one single giant hard drive. With RAID 0, which is the striping method, you'll gain the total space of both drives added together, but it will show up as one drive in your computer. When you're using mirroring, which is RAID 1, you're going to get 50% of the amount of space of the smallest hard drive in the set. The reason being is because you can't mirror you know, the extra space, so it goes with the smallest drive possible. And then using RAID 5, which is the striping with parity, you're going to gain three quarters of the total of all four drives. So that's really important to keep in mind so that you don't look at your hard drive space and say, you know, wow, I'm missing a whole terabyte. You'll know why. Well, there you have it. I hope that clears up the different methods uh, for configuring the hard drives in your network attached storage. It all depends on what you want to use your NAS for. Um, so that's going to do it for this week. I'm Mike, and thanks for watching.